three, two, one. Okay, so now you've been married to Carmen for over 30 years. Let's go back to 1995 when you went to Brisbane. Why did you go there? Well, basically we went there because we had been at the Cairns Christian Centre on the ministry team there and I was a psychologist and I was doing some counselling for them voluntarily. My husband was a um, youth leader. We did our Bible college there. And so then what happened is Teen Challenge asked if, we, if I would go to Brisbane and work for them. And it was a very hard decision, but uh, we felt that the Lord had said yes, so we went. And so while we were there, basically what happened was that we saw an advertisement for a reconciliation meeting, and it happened to be at a uniting church in South Brisbane, and we were very interested in that of reconciliation. Well, what does that mean, a reconciliation meeting? Um, well, for, for us, reconciliation means where there has been people who've been um, hurt in their relationships and need to reconcile. Um, that's what reconciliation is all about. And it can be between groups, not just between individuals. And uh, so we were interested and we, we went along to this meeting. And when we walked in, we were surprised that it was being led by an Anglican um, priest and he prophesied over us before we had a chance to sit down and he oh, wow. said you don't even need to do anything about reconciliation you're a living walking reconciliation and we thought <laughs> wow Just you so, two as a couple. yeah so we sat down and, and listened to the meeting which was quite interesting and then afterwards he had a private chat with us Reverend Jim Nightingale it was and he said, you know, what you need to be working on, if you're interested in racial reconciliation, you need to uh, look at the original division between Jew and Gentile and do some work in reconciling or healing that because that's the original division um, that Satan used as a platform uh, to be able to create the various other divisions in the world. And, you know, that might not make sense to some other people, but it really spoke to us. And we thought, well, we don't know very many Jewish people. So we asked the Lord for a download of his love for the Jewish people. And when we prayed that, he answered us both instantly. Uh, so that was the start of another ministry for us of reaching out to Jewish people, which we have done since then. And we've so been- So how did he answer you? Yes, yes. I mean, not all yeah. prayers get answered immediately, do they? But exactly. for us, it yeah. did. Yeah, what happened? So what happened? Yes, yeah, well, what, what happened instantly? A love for the Jewish people and um, a real um, desire to know Jewish people and to um, reach out to them. And so that has guided us ever since. It's been a very strong focus of our ministry not only racial reconciliation but also the division between Jew and Gentile. Yes, um, so we do work on other areas of reconciliation, uh, male, female, rich, poor, old, young, uh, reconciliation between nations and ethnic groups. So uh, it, it is a, a fairly wide reaching concept but we have put a lot into the, the Jewish Gentile area of reconciliation. And what have you done? Well, <laughs> it's quite a story. Uh, one of the things we did was uh, regarding Australia's position at Evian during uh, the Holocaust, or just really before it got really bad, when the nations got together to deal with the crisis of Jewish refugees, most of the nations turned their back or took very few. Australia was one who said, we don't have a racial problem and we're not desirous of importing one. So when we saw that on our first visit to Israel at Yad Vashem, a big plaque on the wall 
on Australia's position, we felt that we needed to um, apologise for that, which we did um, starting in 2002. Uh, we did that um, for a number of Jewish groups in Australia and we've done that a number of times um, at, at Yad Vashem itself. Um, for, firstly, with a, um, when Norman delivered a, uh, gave them a painting uh, in... He's a painter, uh, we should say. Sorry? Your husband, Norman, is a painter, we should say. Yes, he's an artist and uh, he did this beautiful um, painting of Beersheba or Beersheba, where the um, Australian that? light horse um, had a lot to do with winning a battle there that opened the way for the uh, ending of 400 years of Turkish rule of uh, the land of, of Palestine as, as it became known and today known as Israel. So he gave that painting as a gift when we made the apology in January 2004. And uh, since then we've done that again um, many years later by providing a beautiful plaque with the apology on it which we had prepared in Australia and we hoped it might sit beside the record in Yad Vashem but it actually hasn't been put beside it so I don't know where it's located but uh, somewhere in Israel yes oh yes it'll be in Yad Vashem somewhere <laughs> but you know that was really a 10-year campaign for us to actually get the Australian government to apologize for Australia's position at Evian and uh, Kevin Rudd did that in uh, December 2010, and we were there for it. Okay, and you've been to Israel several times, you lead groups there, is that right? Yes, we've been at least 10 times now, and uh, basically for about seven years, from 2005 to 2011, we headed up the Australian uh, delegation and also uh, the Bethany Gate delegation which took in part of Asia Pacific uh, and basically went to yearly, this was for the Jerusalem House of Prayer for All Nations and went to yearly conferences and made a presentation, led the prayer tower for that session, led a tour around um, Israel after the conference, etc. Wow, so when you said, so when you prayed for a heart for Jewish Gentile relations. I mean, you really have a heart. I mean, going back to where it all started in Israel, how has that impacted your faith life? Oh well, you know, the Lord, the Lord just kept opening doors, and uh, we've just walked through them, and He's given us amazing uh, favor, and I really praise Him for that. He really answered that prayer big time. Wow. So, do you think the fact that you are I would say, so you are a mixed couple, a, an Aboriginal and a, an Australian, white Australian. Do you think that somehow helps you open doors because of your background? Because you are a reconciled couple, I guess, as the... Oh, uh, look, I, I, think it, I think it does. And we've um, hosted a Sons of Abraham conference in Sydney in 2015 and in Israel. Um, in 2017 so for us to actually host a conference in Israel with Jews yeah. and Arabs and work on reconciliation has been quite a big thing but uh, the Lord has blessed that yeah sounds like he's using you in a, several different amazing ways let's find out about some more ways that you've been involved in ministry okay so the other thing is um, the Lord put on Norman's heart. He's, he's, um, he's more so the vision carrier and I'm the one who adds to the vision and puts legs on it basically. So we're a very good um, team. We, yeah. um, we think alike, we sync together really well. But the Lord uh, put on his heart initially to have some 24-7 conferences um, in Australia in capital cities on a yearly basis. We did that for 10 years. And uh, the idea was um, closing the door to things that weren't of the Lord and opening the door to things that were. 
um, so included some spiritual warfare as well. So we had uh, four of those conferences were in Parliament House, Canberra. Others were in capital cities like Sydney and Melbourne, some in regional areas. So it's been an amazing wow. time. And in addition to all that, you pastored a church, Norman and yourself pastored a church for over 25 years. Yes, we've recently celebrated, uh, or last year, 25 years of our ministry. So that is as pastors of the Tabernacle of David in Cairns, because we have a strong focus on, um, on worship and prayer. And uh, also of our parachurch ministry, the Centre for International Reconciliation and Peace. And we've worked in a number of nations on that. We've, we've spoken at reconciliation conferences in Zimbabwe, uh, done some healing between the uh, Shona and the Enderbelly. We've been to Indian reservations on reconciliation conferences and sharing there. So it's been, and, and New Zealand as well, with meetings with Marys. So it's, uh, it's been a, a wonderful opportunity that the Lord has uh, given us to, to do his work as, as he's called us to do. Some birds may well be. Some, okay, uh, that, that, they're gone. They're gone. They're gone now. Okay, uh, we're, we're starting to wrap up here. Uh, let me. Let me uh, well, something else I'd question. like. Something else I'd like to add is um, another thing that the Lord put on our heart was setting up um, a ministry of, of governmental intercession, where we would um, shadow the federal government um, ministers um, positions you know like education health etc and so we would do that by zoom because we had a team from around australia and uh, so we would um, wait on the lord plus also check current affairs and uh, just pray uh, for what was happening in in our nation so we called it the gap ministry based on Ezekiel 22.30, where the Lord looked for someone to stand in the gap. And also we called it, so the full name was Gathering Apostolic Prophetic Ministry. And we also, um, with the Tabernacle of David Asia Pacific, um, have a network through the um, Asia Pacific, um, praying for the needs of, of that area as well. So, as if that wasn't enough, in addition to all this ministry, both your church and parachurch ministry, you've written several books over the years. Please tell us about your books. Oh, well, yes, I've written uh, over 10 books um, on my own and a number of books where I've put a, a chapter in. And my latest book actually is um, Decrees and Dangerous Prayers. So one of the things that the Lord really put on my heart at a conference we hosted in Bendigo in 2006, uh, one of the reasons we located it there because that was the largest Buddhist stupa in the world. The Lord had us to go there and, and he said to me, don't do spiritual warfare, I want you to do a decree. And he gave me a decree and uh, since then I've been doing a lot of teaching on decrees and so I felt the Lord wanted me to write a book on it. So I've just released that. And one of your books, forgive me, I can't remember exactly the title, but something along the lines of White Woman, Black Heart or something like that, is that correct? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Um, so that's a memoir that I wrote in um, 2018. And basically, it's about how I helped the Aboriginal people or First Nations people of Mapoon, north of Weipa, to move back to their land after they had been forced off for mining 11 years earlier in 1963. They were forced off. I helped them back in 74. And their house, their houses were burnt down the church was burnt down so the people wouldn't oh, wow. return and so they i guess one of the awesome things about that is it's a very well functioning community they've gradually rebuilt it and uh, they 
have built a church there and they're, they're virtually in revival at the moment which is rather exciting and originally the Moravians had set up that mission at Marpoon so it did have a Christian basis to start with but it was wonderful I mean to help the, pe the people were really um, grieving about having forcibly moved by police from that community so to to go back and rebuild has been a really big thing so for me to be part of that was a real privilege yeah that sounds fantastic so obviously as we're hearing your story a major theme is your heart for helping oppressed people and helping different groups that aren't getting along to reconcile would that be a, a fair statement yes it would so the Lord's really been tugging your heart, and obviously, being married to Norman, you got to have your eyes open to the plight of Aboriginal people in Australia. Absolutely, and if I could follow that up, I had so much information that I had to pull it out of that first memoir, and I did a second memoir last year called Secrets and Lies. <laughs> that was just really to get attention. But what it focused on initially was the, the Moravians had also set up a, a mission of Arakoon, which was taken over by the Presbyterians and then the Uniting Church. In 1978, the Bielke Peterson government um, had some issues with the church, wanted to get rid of them out of the community. And uh, basically the people said, no, we want the church to stay. They are working with us towards self-management. And so um, I was involved in um, working with the North Queensland Aboriginal Land Council at that time voluntarily to support uh, the community to, to keep the church there. Eventually we did lose that battle, uh, but uh, it, it was important, I think, at least uh, to know that missionaries tend to have bad press but you know aboriginal people often really appreciate the role that missionaries have had in their communities as well wow well the lord has been using you in remarkable ways to bring reconciliation to groups that have been well at odds with each other but you've been working along with norman to help bring reconciliation i should add that you are also besides being a pastor you're a mediator psychologist and a teacher and as we've been talking about an author as well so you're pretty busy thank you so much for sharing your story with us today thank you eric much appreciated and god bless you god bless you too our guest today has been barbara miller and if you'd like to find out more about barbara and her many books you can go to her website barbara-miller-books.com that's barbara